A new airline based in New Jersey has taken to the air and right on the heels of a recession. A recession which consigned Eastern Airlines and Pan Am to aviation history, which steered TWA and Continental to fly under bankruptcy protection and which forced the Boeing Corporation, the world's largest aircraft manufacturer, to lay off 28,000 workers. Even the major airlines have not been spared and they are reeling from severe losses. American Airlines is laying off 500 pilots and 400 mechanics. It's also grounding nearly 10% of its fleet. Delta Airlines is laying off 400 pilots and mothballing 28 aircraft. So you would think that this is a foolhardy time to start an airline, considering the industry bloodbath. Kiwi thinks not. It started operations from Newark Airport in September 1992 with a fleet of four Boeing 727 aircraft leased from Lufthansa, Kiwi flies to only three destinations, Atlanta, Orlando, and Chicago Midway. What does Kiwi think it can do right, where these industry giants fail? So that would be for how many now? One strategy is price. Kiwi offers the lowest fares of any carrier for the routes it serves. And that fare is not for a limited number of seats. It's for all their seats. The price was right. I mean, you know, $99 can't go wrong. For example, ticket prices from Newark to Atlanta go from $743 to Kiwi's $221. Newark to Orlando, it ranges from $354 to Kiwi's $234. Among the majors, only Continental is waging a price war with Kiwi in a last ditch stand to emerge from bankruptcy. All ticketed passengers are assured a seat. You can make reservations through travel agents or by calling directly, 1-800-JET-KIWI, if the lines aren't busy. Price is not the only weapon in their marketing arsenal. With these low fares, you'd expect that Kiwi is a no-frills airline. You couldn't be more wrong. Kiwi offers their passengers more comfort by giving them more space. Their aircraft seat only 150, instead of the regular 170 found on most Boeing 727s. The leg room's excellent, and being 6'2", that's very important to a person like me. And the food is healthier and lighter. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, spring water, high-quality tea, and custom grind coffee. Kiwi blend, what else? Usually you joke about chi rubber chicken. This was wonderful. Even the coffee was good. How is Kiwi Airlines able to provide all these frills at these low fares? Well, airline experts point out three major factors. The first factor is that there is a large supply of labor. The airline industry has shed over 60,000 people and pilot unemployment averages 10%. Second, there is a large supply of aircraft parked out in California's Mojave Desert. Leasing an aircraft two years ago cost $150,000 a month. Today, it only costs $50,000. Third, the major carriers like US Air, United, American, and Delta are burdened by enormous losses. Losses that will not fly away without cost cutting and new industry alliances. Another asset is its labor pool, many of whom come from airlines that fly no longer. Kiwi requires its employees to invest in the shares of its company, a form of mutual commitment. Well, I've invested $5,000, and my husband, who's a pilot, has invested $50,000. So uh, altogether, our family has invested fifty-five. dollars All employees had to come in with a $5,000 contribution to the company. It's uh, taken out of our pay over a three-year period, and um, it's actually to purchase stock in the company. Kiwi's management and employees have an average of 20 years of airline experience. The Kiwi bird is their mascot because many of them were flightless birds from airlines that were grounded under deregulation. Robert Iverson, Kiwi's chief executive and a former Eastern Airlines pilot, has a plan. Kiwi has a niche strategy that puts us in high density, point to point markets offering the highest quality service at the simplest and lowest fares as set by the dominant carrier in any market we serve. So far, Kiwi states revenues exceed their projections. 
in a year when the airline industry as a whole lost a record seven billion dollars. And with the exception of Southwest Airlines, not a single major US airline made money. Does this mean that the new airlines like Kiwi will eventually overtake the majors because of their cost effectiveness? Steve Smith of Delta's district marketing office in Manhattan does not see regional carriers like Kiwi as a threat. On the contrary, he says that commuter or niche airlines, by serving smaller cities, feed passengers to the hubs of the major airlines. What we have is five agreements with uh, what you could call niche or regional carriers. Um, ASA out of Atlanta and Dallas that feed our hubs. Um, SkyWest that, fill, that feeds our Salt Lake City and LA hubs. And these carriers all provide a very important service for us. Over the last two years, 42 airlines have applied to the Federal Transportation Department for operating certificates. 15 have been approved. But is this a new phenomenon for the airline industry? Securities analyst Helene Becker points out that of the 160 airline companies formed from 1978 through 1990, only one is still flying, and that's America West, which is flying in bankruptcy. Um, and if the new carriers like Kiwi and Reno Air, um, Family Air, Skybus, um, to name a few, stick to their strategic plan, um, perhaps even emulate somebody like Southwest Airlines, which has been a successful carrier, um, then they have a good chance at survival. The writing is clearly on the wall. Kiwi Airlines had better stay in niche markets and make some airtight alliances with the majors, or it will become flightless, flightless like the Kiwi bird. George Jurgen reporting.